The negativity of water applies both to the substance in itself, its tastelessness, formlessness, odorlessness, its colorlessness or transparency, and to its manifestations in nature, the boundlessness of the ocean, the timelessness of rivers, the unknowability of the depths. Given the impossibility of capturing its essence except by saying what it is not, a strategy known in theology as the via negativa, it is not surprising that water has been described as an evocation of the elusive nothingness and become something akin to mystical divinity. Like the god of the mystics, water is featureless, omnipresent, beyond words or concepts, and in this sense, ineffable. Like the divine nothingness, it is also the matrix from which something or life emerges, while it may equally be the very embodiment of death, on a whim engulfing its creations within its gargantuan maw. This, perhaps, is part of the problem with using excessively anthropomorphic imagery to characterise water and its many states, for example, describing water as alive or angry or attributing volition to it. More appropriate for water are theomorphic concepts, such as transcendence, ineffability, immensity or origin. By using such terms, aqueous creatures like us can be awakened to the divinity in us. It is a soggy, waterlogged form of divinity, more a divine splash or a splodge than a spark. Most importantly, it is a form of divinity we share with everyone else, past, present and future, and with the whole of the biosphere. <laughs>